What if we could eliminate genetic diseases before a baby's even born? What if we could cure a pandemic or save species from extinction? Well, these aren't what ifs anymore. Meet CRISPR, the breakthrough revolutionizing the world of genetics. Studying bacterial genomes in 1993, Dr. Mojica noticed something. In one region, there were short, repeating palindromic sequences spaced evenly between the other base pairs. He called it CRISPR. CRISPR turned out to be a bacterial immune system. Contrary to Dr. Mojica's initial beliefs, it was the genetic material between the repeats that was important, not the repeats themselves. These sections, called spacers, are stored DNA from invading viruses. When attacked by viruses, bacteria transcribe the spacers into guide RNA, which attach to a protein called Cas9. If you think of the viral DNA as a criminal, the guide RNA is the wanted poster, helping the Cas9 police track it down. As police arrest criminals, the Cas9 clamps onto the viral DNA, cutting and thereby disabling it. Pretty cool, right? Sure, I guess, but why would I care about some random bacteria? We want to cure coronavirus in people, not microbes. Well, CRISPR is not limited to bacteria. Before CRISPR's discovery, gene editing relied mostly on recombinant DNA. This method's like throwing darts blindfolded. The DNA might make it, but more likely will miss, sometimes with harmful effects like cancer. The point is to cure cancer, not cause it. Enter CRISPR. As you now know, the Cas9 protein that cuts DNA is led by guide RNA. So, if scientists engineer guide RNA to have a specific sequence, they can customize Cas9 to cut anywhere. Now that's great, but randomly breaking your DNA isn't helpful. The secret to gene editing lies in the body's DNA repair mechanisms. Say your DNA is this pot and there's some pain on it you don't like. One day, you accidentally drop it, representing Cas9 cutting your DNA. You could repair it by gluing it back together, but it'll have missing pieces, one of which had the paint spot on it. This is non-homologous end joining, where the cell just attaches the two DNA strands back together. This is used when scientists want to eliminate a gene. Or you can look at a picture of a perfect pot to make a replica of the original, but without the paint. This is homology-directed repair, where a strand of DNA containing the correct gene provided by scientists is used as a template for the cell to copy when repairing the break. Thus, a new gene is inserted. In this way, CRISPR can be used to cure genetic diseases like cancer or sickle cell anemia. It has potential to engineer plants to be more tolerant to climate change and is even being investigated as a way to cure COVID-19. The possibilities are endless. However, CRISPR gives us an unprecedented ability to manipulate our genes. Ethically, how far can we go? Should we use CRISPR to change our eye or skin color or should we limit it to curing lethal diseases? These are issues that must be discussed by a global community, which means that everyone must know about the revolutionary breakthrough that is CRISPR.